Hare Krishna. Welcome back, dear devotees. We are happy to uh, uh, invite all of you for this wonderful event, uh, celebrating Karthik event, which is a GBC SPT initiative. As part of this event, we have been conducting from last three weeks, Lord Krishna in Rindavan, Srimad Bhagavatam series, and different uh, disciples or di different devotees from all over the world, they have been talking on this topic, different pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna from Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna book. And also we have been organizing Damodarashtakam in different languages and Srila Prabhupada in my life series. So various uh, different grand disciples have been speaking about their uh, Srila Prabhupada in their life. And also we have been organizing Parikrama to different holy places where Lord Krishna performed his pastimes. So as part of our Srimad Bhagavatam series, Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. So today we are happy to have with His Grace Shankaranand Prabhu. We would like to invite Shankaranand Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you very much, Ananda Shish Prabhu. Hare Krishna we are, uh, we are very happy to have you here, Prabhuji. So we would like to hear uh, from you uh, uh, on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I would like to give a brief introduction about Shankaranand Prabhu. Shankaranand Prabhu is from uh, Sacramento, California. So he, he was introduced to ISKCON in the year 1992 and also he served as a full-time devotee in ISKCON Chaupati and where uh, Prabhuji rendered various services like Pujari services and then management and then preaching services and also he was in the management team member. So Prabhuji uh, also is conduct has been conducting different management training programs and also he has been rendering uh, different wonderful services in ISKCON in New Rindavan community and other places. So for the detailed uh, in introduction about the Prabhuji, maybe you can refer to the description in the uh, link below. So now without taking your time, so I would like to uh, welcome Shankaranand Prabhu for the talk so that Prabhuji, you can uh, uh, go on speaking. I would be sitting back and watching your video. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhu. So thank you very much for uh, giving me an opportunity to to come and glorify the Supreme Lord in this auspicious oh, yeah. of Karthik. It's our great privilege. Hare Krishna. Om Gyanu Timirandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Takshuran Malitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Soyam Rupa Padamahiyam Tadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnava Mishcha Sri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamishta He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namasate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyasha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacham Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnabe Pyo Namonamaham Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigaura Bhakta Pinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna So in this month of uh, Karthik, there are so many beautiful pastimes of the Lord that directly took place and we meditate on this in this month, beginning with the Sharadi Arasyatra, which took place at the very pretext of this month. And then we have some of the prominent pastimes of the Lord, like lifting Gordon Hill, the Gordon Puja followed by lifting Gordon Hill. And then Lord's pastime as you know Damodar being bound by the 
the ropes of love of Mother Yashoda. And also today is, is the auspicious day of you know, Gopashtami, you know, kind of coming. So there are many, many uh, festivals, especially Vrindavan Leelas of the Lord, which took place in this, in this month. You know. And Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes are actually the epitome of the sweetness. The Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami describes the different incarnations of the law. No. But after describing all the different incarnations till ninth canto, in the tenth canto, especially dedicates the pastimes of Lord Krishna. That's very towards the very end you know, of, of the narrations. Because Parishit Maharaj had been hearing Srimad Bhagavatam for many days. He was supposed to be hearing Srimad Bhagavatam till the end of his life. So for the first nine cantos, he heard all the descriptions of different pastimes of the Lord. And the philosophical conclusions as well. In fact, Srila Prabhupada said, if anyone reads Srimad Bhagavatam till nine cantos, that person is early liberated. As Krishna says also in Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasho Jatina Kanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Para. That, that a person who has attained the Brahma Bhuta platform, who has attained the, the liberation already. The symptoms of such a person are na shojati, na kamchati. He does not hanker and does not lament. That is the state of liberation. And by reading first nine canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, one automatically attains that stage of no more hankering or no more lamenting. And that's where the bhakti actually begins. When a person is liberated, then only the true bhakti can begin. Mad bhaktim labhate param Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. So when a person is liberated, then only he can actually start practicing bhakti, true sense of bhakti. And uh, of course, you know that is a gradual stage, but by the mercy of the Vishnu Acharyas, one is given entrance into sadhana bhakti, where one can actually practice the activities of Nitya Siddha Associates of the Lord. What is being practiced by the Nitya Siddha Associates of the Lord is actually being, uh, you know, uh, is being actually uh, practiced by the sadhakas. Just give me one second. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, we are just waiting for uh, Shankaranand Prabhu. I think uh, there is some network issues.
Yeah, welcome back. I think there was some internet issues. Yeah, sure. So, uh, the bhakti actually begins uh, from the liberated stage, but by the mercy of Vaishnava Acharyas. Even sadhakas are given the entrance into the activities of bhakti. No. So, the prime process of practicing devotional service is actually shravanam and kirtanam. Hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna. And this month of Kartik, we can actually absorb our mind in hearing and chanting Krishna's glories more and more. Every activity, every devotional activity done in this month of Kartik bears many, many fold results. So, uh, Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes are especially very, very sweet. Krishna, when appeared 5,000 years ago, he performed so many beautiful pastimes in Vrindavan. And uh, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, the very purpose of his appearance in this world is Paritranaya Sadhuna Vinashaya Chidushkrita and Dharma Samstapana Anthar. To protect the devotees and to annihilate the miscreants, at the same time establish the principles of dharma. But of course, you know, Vaishnava Acharyas will explain that the prime reason of Krishna's appearance is <clears throat> to satisfy his devotees and attract the hearts of the conditioned souls. Because conditioned souls are so much enamored by the by the glare of illusory energy that they never think of coming out of this material existence. In spite of suffering, immense suffering in this world, nobody really thinks of getting out of this material existence. Srila Prabhupada actually gives a very beautiful example. That material nature is tormenting all the living entities in this world with the only one purpose that the living entities should think of getting out of this material existence. Prabhupada gives a beautiful example that there's a wealthy rich man <clears throat> and he had four daughters. So all four are married. And generally, especially in India, you know, when the daughters are married, the son-in-law receive very special treatment from the uh, father-in-law and the family, the family of the girl. So there was a big festivity in the home of this wealthy rich man. So he invited the daughters along with their husbands. They all came. The nice festivity took place. And after the festivity is over, it was expected that they will all leave. But for some reason, all the four daughters along with their son-in-laws continue to stay. Um, of course, you know, when the guests come to your home, you know, they are supposed to be treated as, you know, the representative of the Supreme Lord, Atthi Devo Bhava. But the Atithi is also supposed to follow certain rules. You know. So after the designated period is over, they are supposed to leave. You know. So uh, somehow the, these, these uh, Atithi didn't leave. So the father of these girls, he thought, you know, let me communicate to them in a very gentle way. So in very culture, the host would always invite the guests who are staying in the home for every meal. Please come, breakfast is ready. Please come for the lunch. You know, so uh, one day in the morning, he didn't go to call all the four son-in-laws. So the eldest one, you know, the eldest son-in-law, he told his wife, your father has lost all the culture. He didn't even invite us for the meal. I don't think this is a good place for us to stay anymore. Let's go. Leave immediately. So they packed up the bags and left. So the trick worked for one person. But uh, the other three continued to stay. 
they came shamelessly started eating you know though they were not invited also for the meat so next day father last thinking oh one is gone but three are still staying what to do so next day not only he didn't invite them for the breakfast but he didn't even cook any breakfast made arrangement that no breakfast is cooked the second son in law he told his wife the father seems to be you know not very welcoming he wants us to leave you know yesterday he forgot to even invite us today there is no breakfast so i think we shouldn't be staying here we should leave this place immediately so he packed up the bags and they left but the two still continue to stay so the father in law thinking now i have to go a little overboard next day he didn't cook any meal no breakfast no lunch no dinner you know so third son law got really angry and told his wife you know i think your father has no culture we should leave he doesn't even provide meals for us so we should leave we shouldn't stay here but the fourth one continued to stay no meals nothing provided still he continued to stay finally the father in law had to pick up a stick and start beating him beating the son in law you rascal just get out of here get out of here so shri prabhupada actually explains in this regard material nature you now she keeps giving miseries to different different living entities to different intensity in satyuga people if they saw little discrepancies even and as shri prabhupada actually explains in shri bhagavatam even the death used to be very systematic in the ancient times if the son died before the father the father had a right to go and accuse the king my son died before me you are at fault this happened in in shrimad bhagavatam also when maharaj ugrasen was ruling one of the brahmana's son died and he actually came and accused ugrasen maharaj that you have become sinful you are not following the rules of dharma therefore these calamities are happening so even that death used to be systematic so in in satyuga even little discrepancy would make people think oh i should leave this place this is not a good place to live but in kaliyuga material nature is giving so many torment literally picking up the stick and beating the living entities in so many ways in adhyatmika adi bhautik adi devik miseries constantly tormenting the living entities literally like beating with a stick and yet the living entities have no inclination to get out of this material existence so krishna comes to charm the hearts of all the living entities he comes to this world to attract the minds of conditioned souls one such past time took place right after the gordhan leela which is actually very charming very brief fasting but very charming pastime and it has a lot of uh, uh, you know philosophical siddhanta very intricate siddhanta as explained by our vaishnava acharyas so uh, when shukde gosan was narrating in the pastime of gordhan leela and how uh, krishna lifted the gordhan hill and uh, after the Gordhan Leela, Indra came and begged forgiveness from Krishna, and Krishna forgave Indra. So while narrating that how Krishna forgave Indra, Shivdev Goswami remembered another instance of similarly forgiving another demigod. Because demigods, uh, they are, of course, the devotee. They are not demons. They are not averse to the Lord. they are the subservient they are always subordinate to the lord but sometime the demigods are also bewildered just like uh very first verse of bhagavatam says muhiyanti yat suraya even suris suryas you know the the demigods they are also bewildered by krishna's illusory energy and uh, you know shrimad bhagavatam lord brahma got bewildered indra got bewildered 
you know and therefore the beautiful pastime of Gordon Lila took place and the prime reason is when when a person is in actually high profile position you know, having a lot of control and you know, a lot of uh, facilities you know, to control others and and do some very prominent service and if the person is not very careful and attentive the pride can creep in the person can start thinking i am actually the controller and that was that's what actually bewilders the living entities even great great suris get bewildered there is a beautiful instance in uh, in mahabharat when when krishna comes as you know the peace messenger to create a truce between kauravas and pandavas that time uh, you know the uh, the assembly there were so many great sages sitting there so parshuram was also sitting there vyasadev was also there so parshuram when he heard duryodhan's response to krishna's proposal he actually started instructing duryodhan that you shouldn't be so proud and puffed up pride is the cause of you know it's fall down and he narrated you know how even great personalities when they become proud they are corrected by the by the supreme lord so he narrated how one t- one 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 time the chariot driver of it, you know indra he wanted to marry his daughter so he was looking for the proper alliance and he went all the way to different different planetary system looking for a suitable husband so the time he actually reached to uh, you know rasatal planet and there he saw the nagas one of the beautiful naga sumukha and he decided to marry his daughter to him so he went to the grandfather of sumukha sumukha didn't had father so he went to his grandfather and he said no please accept my daughter for your grandson so sumukha's grandfather said no i cannot accept because last month only garuda came here and and he had uh, you know um uh, taken away my son the sumukha's father and he ate him and he told sumukha that next month i'll come and eat you so sumukha doesn't have very long life span next month garuda will come and eat him so narada muni was also accompanying that time uh, uh, matali and he told sumukha's grandfather don't worry your grandson will not die accept this proposal and we will make sure that your grandson lives for longer you know so he was reluctant but he still accepted so they took the sumukha and went to indra indra was there in heavenly planets and lord vamandev also sitting next to him and uh, narada explained the whole thing that matali has decided to give his daughter to this naga sumukha so you should bless him with a long life span because he has fear from garuda and indra has very good friendship with garuda so he said no no i cannot do that garuda will feel very upset he will feel very angry and lord vamandev he said no 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 don't worry you know he is your chariot driver he is your faithful servant you should bless him he has decided to give his daughter to him so you should bless him please nothing wrong in that so indra being insisted by lord vamandev you know he blessed the sumukha that he would have long life span so narada took this news to garuda you know what happened indra has blessed sumukha with a long life span so garuda immediately came there and he told indra indra what is this you know already that you know i have decided to eat sumukha how can you bless him with long life span you know because if indra blesses somebody you know the blessing will not be futile he is a very powerful servant of the lord so his blessing cannot go null and void so uh, he was very upset he told indra you don't know who i am i am garuda i am garuda i am the one who carries vishnu all around nobody has power strength to carry vishnu i am the one who carry vishnu everywhere 
and Lord Vishnu is there, right? You know. So when Lord Vaman, they heard this, he told Garuda, Garuda, nobody carries me. I carry myself. In fact, not only I carry myself, I carry everyone. I carry you also. You're thinking that you carry me? Okay. Let's carry, you know, the weight of my arm. And saying this, Lord actually placed the arm on the shoulder of Garuda. And Garuda immediately collapsed. He had carried Lord Vamandev so many times on his back. But as soon as the Lord this time placed his hand on his shoulder, Garuda actually fell to the ground. And he felt as if a huge mountain was on him. He started in a tremendous pain and agony. He started praying to the Lord, Lord, please forgive me. I was proud. I was puffed up. It's actually true. Nobody carries you. Whatever strength I have, you only provide me to carry you. So even sometimes, you know, great personalities like Garuda get bewildered. Yeah. So Shukadeva Goswami remembered how, uh, you know, Krishna had forgiven Indra. And at the same time, he remembered how he forgave Varun Dev. Immediately after narrating the Gordhan Leela, he started describing that one time, Nanda Maharaj, he had uh, fasted for Ekadashi. It was a short Ekadashi. Generally, you know, uh, in our regular calendar, we have days for 24 hours. You know, every 24 hours, the date changes mechanically at the midnight. But that's not the case with uh, Vaishnava calendar or the Vedic calendar. The Vedic calendar doesn't have a day or a tithi for exactly 24 hours. It could vary from 22 to 26 hours. And therefore, you will see some time and the tithi doesn't really begin at the midnight. It begins always with sunrise. So whatever tithi is prevalent at sunrise, that is considered the tithi for the whole day. So some tithis are very short. Therefore, we have tithi kshaya. You know? So, so tithi is for 22 hours, for example, you know, or 23 hours. Suppose today sunrise, the tithi happened to be, you know, dashmi, and ekadashi started after sunrise. So that will be dashmi today. But ekadashi is short. That means 22 hours. That means before next sunrise. Ekadashi is already over. So this Ekadashi, which Nanda Maharaj was following, was actually a short tithi. So Nanda Maharaj wanted to, uh, you know, complete the fast, as we say, breaking the fast, you know. So he went early in the morning to take bath in the river Yamuna. Srila Prabhupada says uh, he was a little too early. So, according to the Vedic customs, after sunset, you are not supposed to enter in any water body, especially any river or lake you know, to take bath. It's considered offensive because uh, after the sunset, the celestial beings, they have right to come and take bath in the rivers and lakes on the surface of earth. So, that becomes their property. Human beings are not supposed to enter. So, this happened before sunrise. Nanda Maharaj entered into the water just before sunrise and one of the servants of Varuna because all the water bodies are controlled by Varuna. You know, Varuna is the one who actually controls all the water bodies including the oceans. So, Varuna uses something called Varuna Pash to keep the water bodies intact. You see, ocean is, you know, poured with so many, uh, so much water every moment from the rivers, from the rainfall. And yet, ocean never crosses the boundaries because it is bound by Varuna Pash. Water of the ocean is bound by Varuna Dev. It cannot go outside without his permission. So, uh, one of the servants of Varuna, he captured immediately Nanda Maharaj and he took him to the abode of Varundev. 
So Nanda Maharaj, whenever he used to go, because he's the king of Vraja, whenever he used to go take bath, there'll be some Brahmanas accompanying him, there'll be some, you know, other servants also accompanying him, and some other associate will be accompanying him. So you never go alone for taking bath. You're the king of Raja. So when he entered into river of river Yamuna to take bath, and he didn't come out when he went inside the water and he didn't come up, the all the uh, friends and and the servants of Nanda Mahala, they started crying. They started calling Krishna, Krishna Mahabaho, Bhaktana, Bhayankar, my dear Lord Krishna, you caused the fearlessness for your servants. But they were feeling afraid. Nanda Maharaj went inside the water and he didn't come up. So where did he go? Did he uh, drown and die? So they become very much fearful for Nanda Maharaj. So Krishna, he was sleeping that time you know, in the in the nearby place, you know. So when he heard this crying, immediately he got up and came to River Yamuna and he inquired what happened. So they narrated to him that Nanda Maharaj went to take bath, but he didn't come out. So Nanda Maharaj was taken by this uh, servant of uh, Varuna. And Shukde Goswami actually calls that servant of Varuna as Asura, as a demoniac servant of Varuna. And our Vaishnava Acharya have given beautiful explanation why he has been referred as because Varuna Dev is a demigod and his associates should also be referred as demigods. But this associate of Varun Dev is referred as specifically as Asura because uh, demoniac because of few reasons. First and foremost reason is he was unaware of the position of Nanda Maharaj. Now, as a demigod, he should have known who is Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj is the father of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. He plays the role of father in Krishna's pastimes. So he is an eternal associate of the Lord. And he is beyond the jurisdiction of any of the demigods, you know, rewarding or punishing him. From time, you know, the question may come, if Nanda Maharaj is an eternal associate of the Lord, so we read from Srimad Bhagavatam that, uh, you know, the two associates, Drona and Dhara, they perform tapasya, you know, severe austerities. And Brahma gave them benediction that you will have the Supreme Lord as your son and you'll be able to relish his pastimes. So they became Nanda and Yashoda. So question may come, how is it that Brahma can give benediction to somebody to become Nanda and Yashoda? But Hilma uh, Shiram Swami Maharaj actually explained this point very beautifully in his book Krishna Sangati. He says, Drona and Dhara are the eternal counterpart of Nanda and Yashoda in the material world. Nanda and Yashoda, they are the associate of the Lord from Goloka. They eternally are with Krishna in the spiritual world. So whenever Krishna comes to the material world, they play the role of the father and mother for Krishna and Balana, especially for the Krishna. So uh, that time, Drona and Dhara, who are like the counterparts of Nanda and Yashoda in the material world, they merge in the body of Nanda and Yashoda. And that's how they relish. Because a demigod like Brahma cannot give benediction to someone to become uh, the, the eternal associate like Nanda and Ishoda. It's like, you know, I don't have the million dollars. How can I offer a million to anyone? I don't have any money. So demigods neither can benedict nor can punish the associates of the Lord. So this, uh, this fact was not known to this servant of Varun Dev. And secondly, the demigods are also people. They are persons. They are supposed to be considerate of the motives of the person, what the person is doing. You know, 
demonic tendency is you simply follow the laws you know oh you didn't do this you get punishment or oh, you follow this you get reward but demigods or divine nature is you see the intentions of the person so this servant of varma should have noticed the intentions of uh, nandamal then the intention was to follow the scriptural rules and regulation to break the fast complete you know the complete the ekadashi vrata in timely manner so he should not have arrested nand maharaj simply on the technical background that oh because you know you fail to follow this rule you get punishment sometimes devotee also have fear you know oh i ate uh, you know something that had onion in it you know now what no nothing if it happened by mistake if he happened to you know miss something on ekadashi you ate some grains by mistake krishna is not sitting with you know sword okay today you did mistake i chop off your head no and similarly the devotees are also very considerate so demigods they are all supposed to be devotees of the lord so they are very considerate of this fact but this associate of nand maharaj uh, the associate of varun dev he was negligent of this and therefore uh, shri vishnu chakri thakur especially says he is referred as asura so krishna when he was informed by the the associates of nand maharaj that nanda went inside the water and in come out krishna immediately jumped inside the yamuna and went to the abode of varun dev and as soon as varuna saw lord krishna he actually stood up and offered welcome to krishna he had made nand maharaj sit on a very royal jewel throne because of course varuna's associate was uh, foolish and ignorant but varuna dev was not varuna dev immediately realized that his servant has done mistake so he had comfortably made nand maharaj seated on a royal throne and as soon as krishna came he stood up and welcomed krishna you know and offered beautiful prayers to krishna my dear lord today my life is actually successful i have taken so many forms so many bodies in different different lives span all those bodies have been useless because i didn't had the fulfillment but in this body as varuna my life is successful because i have seen you face to face i am having your beautiful darshan so my life is actually successful jagadeep goswami also says in bhagavata you know the eyes are useless if a person doesn't have darshan of the lord lingani vishnu urna dirikshato ye if a person doesn't take the darshan of the lord in his dd form or you know in any way then his eyes are useless in fact the whole existence of a person is useless if he does not uh, you know engage himself in devotional service to the supreme lord so uh, varun dev actually prayed to my lord to my lord thank you so much for blessing me anyone who takes shelter of your lotus feet can easily transcend this material existence this flow or this the journey of this material existence is completed or finished for a person whoever takes shelter of your lotus feet there is no trace of any any material uh, elements within your form there is no material existence for you because krishna's form is satchidananda vigraha ishwara parama krishna satchidananda vigraha so demi gods know this very well so so varuna dev said my dear lord there is no material energy within you like our body is made up of earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and false ego krishna's form is not like that his form is chidananda whenever krishna comes to even the material world krishna says in bhagavad gita prakritim swam adhishthaya sambhavami atmamaya being situated in my own nature i descend to this world so varun dev knew this and 
he offered the beautiful prayers to the Lord. He said, my dear Lord, please forgive me. One of my foolish, ignorant associate who didn't know the intricacies that especially when the Ekadashi is very short, then the person can enter in the water even before sunrise. He didn't know these intricate details and therefore he arrested your father out of ignorance. Please forgive me. His offense is actually my offense. So please, I'm begging forgiveness for, from you. So Varun took the responsibility of the offense of his servant. So Krishna was very pleased and he forgave Varuna and uh, brought Nanda Maharaj back to his associates. And the associates, all the relatives of Nanda Maharaj, they were very happy, very happy to see Nanda Maharaj returning. And Nanda Maharaj was completely astonished because he saw the, the opulent city of Varun Dev. He saw how opulent was Varun Dev. And yet, Varun Dev offered respects and worship to Krishna. So, this really amazed Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj was thinking, oh, how is it that, that Varuna, the lord of waters, who was so opulent, his kingdom was so opulent, was uh, offering respects to my son. It's actually very interesting. Nanda Maharaj thought the, the city of Varuna was very, very opulent. Of course, Vrindavan is the most opulent place in all of creations. Not only the material world, but even in the spiritual creations, in all the spiritual worlds, Vrindavan is considered the most opulent place. Lord Chaitanya in his uh, pastimes, you know, during especially Rathyatra festivals, after the Rathyatra festival, you know, one time it so happened that Srivas Thakur, he was very much enchanted by the mood of Lakshmi Devi's, uh, you know, uh, opulences. So he started, uh, you know, making statement that, oh, I don't know why, why Lord Jagannath leaves uh, my goddess of goddess Lakshmi and goes to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is an ordinary place. With some, there are only some few leaves and fruits and flowers. What is what does Krishna find there that he leaves the opulent palace of Lakshmi and goes to Vrindavan? And Lord Chaitanya was laughing when he heard such statement from Srivas Thakur. And he told Srivas, looks like you know you are very much influenced by the by the what do you call it? Opulences of the Lord. The opulence of Lord are having, Aishwarya of the Lord is having direct impact on you. But Sarutama is the simple devotee of Vrindavan. So Sarutama started narrating, My dear Shivas, you have forgotten the opulence of Vrindavan. He started glorifying. Vrindavan appears to be a place which is very simple, only leaves and you know fruit and flowers. But it is actually made up of Chintamani gems. Each and every dust particle of Vrindavan is actually Chintamani. That's what we read in Brahma Samhita also. Chintamani Prakara Sad Masu Kalpa Briksha. Each and every tree in Vrindavan is actually uh, uh, Kalpa Briksha. The Surabhis there are, you know, wish fulfilling cows, you know, Kamadhinu cows. So, opulence of Vrindavan, in front of the opulence of Vrindavan, even the opulence of Vaikuntha is actually insignificant. What to speak of opulence of Varuna? But to ordinary eyes, you know, sometimes it appears that Vrindavan is the ordinary place. You know, just like, you know, even, uh, even Krishna, he appeared, when he appeared in this world, 5,000 years ago. Not everyone could appreciate Krishna as the Supreme Lord. There were so many people who thought Krishna to be an ordinary person like Jarasandha or, or Duryodhan. So many demons thought Krishna is just an ordinary person, maybe a little more powerful person. So similarly, you know, sometimes Vrindavan may also appear to be ordinary. Of course, the Brajvasis, you know, they were 
covered by Krishna's yoga maya potency. So therefore, Nanda Maharaj thought that Varuna's Nigari was actually more opulent than Vrindavan. So he narrated everything to his friends and his friends or all the, the Gopas, they started thinking, Krishna must be the Supreme Lord because otherwise, why is that Varuna would, you know, uh, respect or worship him in this way? No. So they were thinking, maybe if Krishna is the Supreme Lord, will he show his mercy to us and give us entrance into his abode? And when they were thinking like that, you know, the uh, the <clears throat> Krishna could understand their heart. So Krishna decided to reveal to them the glories of Vrindavan and also give them assurance. So Krishna actually gave them first darshan of Goloka Vrindavan. And you know, Vishnu Chakit will explain that why he gave Darshan of Golok Vrindavan because he was going to give them the realization of Brahman and, and uh, you know, the Vaikuntha Dham also. So, if the devotees of Raj Bhumi they actually enter into Brahma Jyoti, it will be a calamity. So, first Krishna gave them Darshan of Golok Vrindavan, you know, it's Krishna Loka. Then he revealed to them Brahma Jyoti, and then finally. He showed them his, uh, you know, abode again. So the Brajabasi saw Krishna also in his abode in Golok Vrindavan, being worshipped and praised by the Vedas. Personified Vedas were offering prayers to him. And then he brought them back to Vrindavan. So in this way, the Brajabasis, they actually were given darshan of Golok Vrindavan. But uh, in Istamala, Rupa Goswami actually makes a very beautiful statement. He says, uh, May you be protected by Mukunda, who in order to teach the Kahod men that there is no place as sweet as earthly Vrindavan, effortlessly showed them Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and then brought them back to earthly Gokul. It means, the, the place of Vrindavan is actually very, very sweet and very, very special. It is in one way uh, superior to even Krishna Loka because Krishna's pastimes as Bal Gopal are only manifested in earthly Vrindavan and not in Golok Vrindavan. So in this way, Krishna actually uh, satisfied all the Brajabhasis fulfilled their desire and forgave the Varuna in this way. So this is this is such a beautiful pastime of how the Lord is actually very forgiving. Even if the demigods or their associates sometimes commit mistakes, he forgives them very easily. And that actually gives a great hope to all of us that even if sometime in our own sadhana bhakti, in our own practice of Krishna consciousness, if we do some mistakes or or even if sometime we are, you know, uh, drifted away from the principles of Krishna consciousness, you know, Krishna will not be very hard on us. He's a loving father. He's a very affectionate to his devotee, Bhakta Vatsal. So remembering this, this particular uh, uh, nature of Krishna, that he's always forgiving. The devotees, you know, they practice Krishna consciousness with much, much more sincerity and vigor, knowing that Krishna is always there as our protector. So with this, we'll conclude our uh, speech here. Thank you very much, Anand Prabhu, Hare Krishna. And thank you very much all the devotees for your participation. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for the wonderful uh, class, Koji, explaining uh, how Nanda Maharaj was captured by the servant of Varuna. And you spoke many important points, especially about the importance of Shravanam, you spoke in the beginning. And you mentioned about the stubbornness of the living entities, how the living entities, especially in, in the age of this Kali Yuga, they're so stubborn, despite the um, indications from the material world, still they don't take the lesson, but still 
the lord is so merciful he comes and he performs the past times and he attracts these living entities you very ni- nicely explained these points and and also you mentioned about the pride how the pride is the cause of the fall also you mentioned about the uh, importance of darshan how darshan of the, the eyes which are which do not take darshan of the lord are useless you are mentioning and also you mentioned about the opulence of the spiritual world so which is uh, uh, made up of chintamani dam and kalpa kshatri so also you mentioned one important quality of the lord forgiveness of the lord so uh, which is a great hope for all the living entities i thank you very much for this uh, uh, wonderful session prabhu ji we request all our uh, viewers to stay uh, in touch with the gbc spt channel for receiving further communications hari krishna i i'm not sure bro if there's any questions or any uh, so far there are no questions prabhu ji okay sure in case thank you, you yeah in case you would like to make any concluding comment or something yeah actually uh, just one last uh, uh, point i just want to mention about having darshan of the abode of the lord like krishna gave darshan to all the brajwasis he showed them golok vrindavan you know and brajwasis thought that the vrindavan they were living in is actually an ordinary place you know? of course that was due to yoga maya shakti of the lord but uh, similarly to see the real glory of vrindavan we need actually the mercy mercy of the lord and more than the mercy of the lord the mercy of actually vaishnavas especially for sadhakas it's so crucial to have the mercy of guru and vaishnavas along with the mercy of the lord to be actually able to see the abode of the lord yeah very to because yeah. because without that mercy when we go to vraj bhumi or when we go to the holy dham of even navadvi we will see only the externals yeah that actually reminds me of a beautiful instance which which is there actually in history you know few hundred years ago history uh the emperor akbar he was he was having many brahmanas in his court so one of the brahmana was actually dansen who used to sing very beautifully he had a very beautiful singer it is said that tansen when he used he used to sing you know you would sing particular rag meg mala it would actually rain and start raining whether it's a rainy season or not whenever he start singing meg mala the clouds would come and it would start raining so one time he was singing this rag and akbar told tansen tansen i don't think anyone can sing better than you in this world and tansen in a great humility said no 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 my dear king i am a 10th class singer my guru maharaj he is sings million times better than me and of course said, i can't believe it how can somebody sing better than you he said yes that's true he said can you call your guru maharaj i want to hear his singing he said that's a problem you know my guru maharaj doesn't sing for any world kings he sings only for the supreme He lives in Vrindavan, and he only sings for the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. So, if you want to hear his singing, then you have to go to Vrindavan. So, King Agubar was immediately inspired. He said, "I want to go to Vrindavan. Let's go and do it." So, Tansen and Agubar they both came to Vrindavan, and the Guru of Tansen was Swami Haridas, a great devotee of Krishna. So. Tansen went and Akbar disguised himself as an ordinary person, you know, accompanying Tansen. So Tansen went and he offered respects to his guru, Swami Haridas, and he said, "Gurudev, you have taught me this Meg Mala Rag. Just, I want to show you if I'm singing correctly." So he purposefully started singing in a distorted way, and Swami Haridas said, "No." This is not how you sing. I'll show you time, and then you can sing. So Swami Haridas actually started singing, and when he started singing, you know, Akbar was so enchanted. He started shedding tears. Okay. So then he fell at the feet of Swami Haridas. He said, "Swami Ji, I want to do some service for you. I am King Akbar. You know, I am Emperor Akbar. I had come to him. Listen, you are singing." and i want to do some service you please give me some service so swami haridas smiled he said you want to do some service come he took him to the river yamuna and he saw shown him a cart which was 
the corner of the ghat was little corner of the ghat was broken he said you are a king so i want you to fix this ghat and saying this swami harida that he blessed king akbar akbar could see that the ghat was actually made up of chintamani gems it was not made up of ordinary stones and brick so when he saw that this ghat is made up of these precious gems and he looked at swami harida swami harida and he said he fell at the feet of swami harida he said i don't think i can even fix this portion of ghat even if i spend all my wealth i won't be able to procure even one stone which can actually be used to fix this portion by the mercy of swami harida akbar could actually see the glory of vrindavan so similarly you know in order to see or realize the glory of vrindavan we need the mercy of guru and vishnu so with this i will conclude thank you thank you, thank you so much bhaji thank you so much for this wonderful point bhaji so we hear that the holy holy dham is revealed by holy man so this is what we understood from this narration thank you very much bhaji so hari krishna yes